I will take a look at the state of the nation security situation 10 years after 87 of the kidnapped Chibo girls. They are not accounted for. Parents are devastated. We have the case of kidnapping, terrorism, you just name it. And of course, uh, Barrister Robert, anybody was making a, a point before we went on that break. Barrister, you said they're no longer Chibo girls, but Chibo women. Take it up from there, Barrister. Yes, there's no way. Ten years after, according to you, they will remain girls. Many of them would have become women. And that tells a whole lot of stories about uh, the kind of government that we have. I remember that, like I said earlier, one of the strongest points against Kulo Jonathan was the security situation. And the current uh, administration of the APC, or APC as a party then, went to Mount Olipos to shout that um, it was easy to knock off then, it was just Boko Haram, the Boko Haram sect, and that good Lord Jonathan, in their ways, was uh, um, incapable, to say the least. Then came Jeremiah Mamadou Buhari as president of Nigeria, and during his campaigns, he said within six months, he was going to stamp out um, the, the Boko Haram sect. It made reference to the small uh, troubles that the Macedonian people made and said he was able to flush them away. People on the, on the strength of that voted for him. I don't want to go into whether Nigerians actually fully voted for him, but he became president. And in eight years, the thing escalated. Not only did the Boko Haram sect uh, get more strength, we got other technologies like bandits and banditry. And the likes, the headers, as you want us to say it, and I've always repeated here that from my childhood, I've known Fulani Hesmen. Because of the kind of administration we had then, they were no longer to be seen or called Fulani Hesmen, but Hesmen. I don't know whether we call them the Bini Hesmen. Mm -hmm. They took the space in the farms and forests. And eight years, came and went, Buhari only was able to escalate the insecurity situation in Nigeria, contrary to the uh, uh, promise or promises that he made. Apart from insecurity, you all know that so many things went wrong in Nigeria, and there came the current administration of uh, Al-Haji Tinubu. Tinubu said it was his turn. He made many promises. And I know that I have always said that when the APC was in opposition, they were the best opposition in the whole world. And when power was handed over to them, they got confused as to what to do with it. That's the way I look at it. Because if you ask me, there is no one promise that the APC made to Nigerians, including what we are focusing on today in security, that they were able to see through. And Again, they found themselves into power. I don't know whether the Buhari regime was better in terms of insecurity or the Tinubu regime is better. Whichever way, we have constantly been besieged by horse of insecurity. Different names have come up. Like you said, people now, bandits or uh, 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 kidnappers, call them whatever name you want, now come to cities and towns or villages to take rules to go pitch tents in the forest. That's the height of it. And if you ask me, you also mentioned, and I just smiled, that if a person has so much money to pay a ransom, why would he go by road? Could that be why FS within the country has moved from 15,000 naira, 15,000 naira during Gulo to 100 and something to 200,000 naira, the same space? the same distance, because they feel that people are now, should be scared of moving by road and should come and fly. What are we talking about? Insecurity has taken strong roots in Nigeria. Nobody can sleep with his two eyes open. We are going to, uh, we'll be going according to the plan you have.
yeah. to uh, 2024. Of course. You what know, happened we'll, in we'll, Unibe is the height of insecurity. No, no, when we'll get to so that point, when we'll get to that point, we'll talk about that. So you just uh, hold on, Barrister. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Uh, we'll, we'll get to that point, we'll talk about it in a particular uh, topic and, of course, a particular order. Well, uh, Al Haji Ahmed Ewarika, you heard him. Uh, he spoke about the APC, and of course, you're a card covering member of the APC. But for what he said, he said he's not so impressed with the APC in terms of security and all that promises being made that they are still waiting to at least get a tip of the dividends of democracy. Take it up from there. We talk about security challenges that we're having as a nation. Ah, in fact, uh, from the question, I'm taking a deep breath now because uh, <laughs> you are referring to my party now, mm. and uh, there's no way. No, I he can, mentioned your party. Yes, yeah, there's mm. no way I can, you know, hand twist the whole issue now to say that uh, my party is doing, uh, uh, you know, uh, even 70 percent in terms of the in terms of uh, security because uh, the insecurity is really the insecurity is really alarming. Mm. Even I myself, I am not happy with the current insecurity. Uh, let's leave party aside and we'll have to tell ourselves the truth. The level of insecurity now is very, very alarming. Yes, I listened to him, you know, uh, keenly, starting from when we took over, you know, in 2014, uh, uh, no, 15. 15. Yes. In fact, the insecurity level started skyrocketing. So the thing now started they're giving us worry. Why is it like this? We're thinking, is it because uh, the Aousama or Ifo Lanima was in power? And that one has given rise to some group of persons to say, our person is in power. Let us mm -hmm. continue to, you know, perpetrate more mayhem. Mm -hmm. Okay, after the era of, uh, you know, uh, the Aousa stroke full anima, so Yoruba man is there now. We were thinking, okay, some sector will have to lay down their arms because a new sheriff is in town. Mm -hmm. God, new sheriff may not want to take some, you know, trash that was being uh, taken from other persons. So, but to my greatest surprise, the thing has shifted from Borono State. Borono is now almost relatively one of the most peaceful states now, mm. if you permit me to say. And it has shifted to the other part of uh, the northern part now, the northwestern part of the country. And now, even recently, we are hearing even in, I think it was not Undo or uh, yeah. that uh, some Yoruba agitators kind mm. of also ransacking the local government. So in fact, when I heard of it yesterday, I was kind of shocked. So why will somebody now come and say you are agit agitating for what again? When a Yoruba man is on top of the gear and the other group of people will come make a Yoruba nation agitator, agitating for what again? So now, it, it, it now makes me to think that uh, insecurity now is not like a lucrative business or mm. crime is not like a lucrative business. Because if it's not a lucrative business, I don't see a situation whereby people will just dive into you know, crime and insecurity just to make more fortune. Because if it is not paying them, I don't think they would have been going into this stuff. Com coming from the angle of paying ransom, you will see a situation whereby somebody is kidnapped and you are caught. The security force that we have in this country have what it takes to actually track even that money to the very particular person who received the money. And they actually have what it takes to actually, you know, track those group of persons, even where they are sharing the money, to apprehend them. Mm -hmm. And if these things were done, you know, continuously, so many people would have withdrawn from this issue of kidnapping and the rest, so that they would go and realize and say, this business is no longer profitable again. But as it is, I'm not accusing the security, you know, agencies that they are collaborating, but I may also say they may be collaborating, because the way things are going now, uh, I don't really think this one have to do with only politicians alone. Our security architecture also need to, we need to beg them, let me use that word. We need to beg them. If the challenge is funding, let them cry out so that we can also use the little uh, opportunity we have in the media space to also join them to cry out that please fund them. If it is lack of manpower that they are facing, they should also cry out. We also use this little medium on air to also join them to cry out that manpower. We have, in fact, Nigeria is so populated that the unemployment is over very much. So if it is lack of map power, we have the human resources that can fill in the gap. So if it is lack of resources, at least if we are borrowing money to fund other aspects of governance, they can still continue to borrow money to fund security. Even in the United States, they, they borrow money as well. So if it is as for that, okay, we don't have money, they should borrow to fund if that is the issue. But the way it is now, I may not be blaming only the political angle only. I'm also be blaming the security architecture again. Because if they are up and doing, 
I believe this insecurity would have not escalated or to this So you're extent. saying it's not a political party? Well, as it is right now, yes, uh, my, my, I will have to score my party very, very low in mm -hmm. terms of insecurity. They are not actually making me proud. Mm -hmm. Because to be candid with you, uh, there was a statement long ago that said if insecurity lasted for more than 48 hours, you know that the government of the day, mm -hmm. they are part and parcel of it. And so that's on that, related to later General uh, Sanya Sanya Bacha. Bacha. Okay. So with that, that is why I cannot write off my, my, my party from this whole thing. Because it has last, this is no longer 48 hours now, almost running to nine years mm -hmm. of insecurity in the state. If at my farm I've been attacked by, as my organ, I call it, Hesme, I couldn't get anything out of the plantain that I planted. You understand? People are scared to even go to farms. So even half of my, uh, you know, facilitators who work for me, they have been kidnapped. Half two of them have been kidnapped. This is, in fact, I, I, I have an experience with it. I, my own local, my own uh, village uh, or my community, you know, Chama, have been kidnapped in my own village. He told me the ordeal. How these persons, how they do this whole thing here, yeah, they were discussing with him. Yes, and this is just, it's a thing that, I find with the little level of knowledge I have in security, this is can be tracked. If really the security, that's why I said I'm not going to blame only the political party aspect. I'm also going to blame the security architecture too. So either there's a collaboration somewhere or there's a disconnect somewhere. So, but that collaboration now, at least you need to look into this aspect very right. well. Professor okay. Joshua. You've heard both of them. Now, they have a little art to read, and uh, he said this has gone beyond party. Though he's saying that the APC, they've not really impressed him. I'll just start with PDP, Jonathan. So to speak to Jonathan's era, when they came up, uh, right now we have uh, an APC on the gun. It's like it's an escalation. Some are saying it has gone beyond tribe. It has gone beyond religion. It has gone beyond party. It's all about profit to the extent that many persons that ought not to be involved in this are getting involved in it because of what they are getting, the proceeds. Take it off from there. All right. Um, first and foremost, I want to appreciate my brother here for speaking the truth. Mm. You understand? It's difficult for persons who are especially party members to open up and say the truth. Secondly, I want to align myself with the position of my my learning the senior sitting uh, right to us. You see, the, it is quite frustrating and because of the security challenges that we face currently in Nigeria, and it's quite unprecedented. The truth is this, where there is insecurity, businesses cannot thrive. Mm -hmm. Investors cannot come and say they want to invest. You will not want to invest in a place where there is no security, where there is uh, mayhem, rascality, and all of those things. Now, now the issue of um, the persons who are actually involved, these persons, the government know these persons that are involved. That is the reason why, you know... Uh, oh, to you, the government know this person? Yes, to me, yes, to me. They, they right. know this person. That is the reason why they have not been able... They, if they want to get a hold of these people, they know how to get a hold of them. They know how to get a hold of them. So, like, I, like my brother said, it's because of the fact that they make earnings from it, people are there solidly behind them. You cannot tell me that from um, nine years and still counting coming, that at the, you cannot track down those, you know, those uh, perpetrators of crime. And use them, use so at least use some as a scapegoat to serve as a lesson to others for the past nine to ten years. So it is quite, it is pathetic. It is, it is disheartening. At the end of the day, you can see where it has brought us to. The roads in, in Nigeria are very unsafe to travel. I, I have been a, kid, a victim of 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 uh, kidnap. I, I've been, a, I've been a victim of kidnap before last year. I know, yes, yes. I know, I know what I suffered in the hands of those men. They are, they are conscienceless, wicked. So you cannot tell me that the um, security agencies or rather the government do not have a clue to these persons. You understand? So at the end of the day, um, foreign investors, they will be scared. They wouldn't want to come to a place that has unrest. They wouldn't want to come to where if they invest their money in, you know, at the end of the day, they will start running, get out, get out. You know, so security is just one part. Hmm. Of, a, of an issue. But again, it is very, very, very important and very, very, very uh, paramount. So we need to take cognizance of it. If the minute uh, the government realizes this and, you know, put a hold on it and try to put something that we had, uh, like my brother said, from the days of uh, Gulag uh, Jonathan hmm. down to Muhammad Buhari, and you can see the way Gulag Jonathan was, was hung in the cross and crucified hmm. the time when he was, when he was in office as, as president. When President Muhammad Buhari came, it, 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 it even became worse. And in his words, now said, those those Chibok gates. I'm no longer Chibok gates. They're not Chibok they're women. women. They're not, they're not Chibok, they're not Chibok, Chibok women. Probably as a dad, they have even settled down. Settled down. Even 
have been living in that place. Mm. So it is rather, it is rather unfortunate. You know, it is, it is, it is pathetic. The truth is this. You know, even the Bible says that the watchman <laughs> watch it in vain. Only God. Yeah, so, so most of us, we are even not depending on. <laughs> you are depending on God. On God. <laughs> you understand? You are depending on, on God. If I tell you the, the, the trauma that, that I went through when I was kidnapped last year, you wouldn't, mm. you wouldn't believe it. For, I was in their custody for five days, five days, five whole days. And that, I thought that uh, at this point, this is the end of the road for me. But at mm. the end of the day, like I said, God came and rescued me. You understand? And I, 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 and I came out. So the truth is that the government need to really sit down. You know, put things in order, put their house in order. If they really want to track, I've been to uh, the state uh, headquarters of the Nigerian Police Force. Mm. I can tell you for free that these guys have tech, as in they have equipment, they have facilities for free. I can mm. tell you when I, I, I went to the Interpol's office in Abuja, when I, when I went there, I was amazed. I was like, wow, we have this. And are you aware that we have this and we can't track any of them? God bless you, Thank my brother. You. Are, you aware, are, you aware, are, you aware, are you aware that? Anywhere you are in Nigeria, if they, if they really want to pick you up, because I went there to, to uh, for as, a, as an account of mm -hmm. one of my clients, if they, want to, they really want to pick you up, they can get a hold of you. But it's because, of, because based on the fact that it has not turned to uh, profit making, it's not a venue of a, a business, mm -hmm. you understand? So, so you, will not, you will not be able to take away the political light from it. So it is, it is rather, you know, unfortunate. All right, all right. Well, so of the opinion that we have a VP, and according to what we heard, that our number one man said, looking about security, VP should head that committee, Shetima. That's what we heard, that any committee about security, the VP should be the one to really head it because of his experience in that particular region. All of us say that, look, it has gone beyond a particular tribe. It has gone beyond political party. This time around, even individuals of some communities are even involved in it because of the creative nature. Are you still going to hip it on the APC? All collaboration, so to speak, between self security agents and, of course, people that like to perpetrating this dastardly act on Nigerians, Barrister. Well, if we say that the vice president has the onus of presiding over security committees and the current vice president we know was a governor and at the very beginning of this um, unfortunate incident if you have forgotten i still remember that the most wanted person at that time laid out the boko around was found in his state house in abuja when he was declared wanted till today i'm not aware of his explanation of how the criminal was housed in his a liaison house in Abuja. Those are speculation and allegations, though. No, that was a speculation. It was an allegation. It was a truth that even the, the media carried. The truth of the matter is such a person today, we are saying, should be in charge of security. I don't want to say he is a security risk, but at that time, certainly he was. For you to understand the fact that insecurity is, the ambassador security is found by even the political class. Recently, a militia group sprang up in Nasarawa State. And when the man was caught, he confessed that the governor, how the governor of the state made him to form that, uh, uh, that group. We are aware that APC promised that they knew how to handle it and they were voted into power, and the thing, like the three of us have said, they escalated. When you want to push the buck to the, to the military or the security architecture as they used it, have we forgotten that the president of Nigeria is the commander-in-chief of the armed forces? But when you, when you talk about the, the, the VP, all those uh, allegations that are just mere speculation, no matter what, because they don't have concrete evidence about that. Yes, he was a one-time governor. He has experience in this. That's the reason why we're saying, look, you have to chair this committee. In the interest it doesn't of, mean that yeah. there was uh, 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 you know, a, a man that was accused of being a one, or having one or two connections with terrorists that is found in his office. and all that. These are those speculations. So, so yeah. let's leave it at the realm of speculation. I, I, in the interest of ITV, a darling station to me, Let's leave it at that realm, but you know that we all know the truth as of that time. But again, like I said, the president is the commander in chief of the armed forces of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. 
And so it causes shots. If he wants to change all the, the heads of security today, he's able to. The box stops on his table. And the, to that extent, nobody can take the presidency and the ruling party out of this and blame their subordinates. The chief of army staff, the chief of security staff, the chief of uh, naval staff, and all of them hold their offices at the pleasure of the president. He can, for no reason, for without explanation, remove any and or all of them. So to that extent, it is the president who must be in charge. Because the act of governance, the, 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 the expectation of any government, is to ensure the security of lives and properties of the citizens. If you are not able to do that, then you are failing. Good luck, Billy Jonathan was not able to do that in a few months, and APC cried to the high heavens to say that it was a failure. He was called clueless. And even the APC gentleman here, I thank him for his sincerity, has said that his party coming to power has seen or witnessed the escalation of insecurity and other vices in the country, which means the leadership of APC is more clueless than the one they said was clueless. Well, well, well is that, that is own opinion, and that is quite like, you know, hitting on the party I, I because truth is the truth. Why did he change his opinion right now? Would I you stick up, to that I particular I, I, opinion of yours? I abuse Come on. My, but that was, that was a no blow. No, that, that, that was if a I tell blow. You, if I tell it was you, a no blow. <laughs> if I tell you that my mother is a witch, and you now say, oh, she would have killed the person they said the witch killed yesterday, <laughs> would you be wrong? We agree, whether we like it or it's not a laughing matter. Is it the economy? Is it infrastructure? Is it security? What aspect of the Nigerian economy has not gone haywire since APC came aboard? Do we still need to, to, to paint the picture that APC has unleashed unbearable conditions and situations for You Nigeria? keep saying APC, but this goes beyond political parties. We agree to that already. Where does it go to if it goes beyond the political party? We gave our own Sub, uh, our own uh, votes to a particular party, not to an individual. We vote for, we run the party government in Nigeria so that they can protect and preside over our interests. And today, you are suffering insecurity. Everyone is suffering insecurity because we must be limited to insecurity just now. And so, should I now say the president? No. Should I now say the governor? No. I'm talking about the party, and that is even fair. Otherwise, Buhari. Uh, Tinubu and his, their likes went to take over Lagos to cry for the insecurity that was at the periphery during the, the, the last administration, the administration before theirs. And today, they appear to have no answer at all. How can bandits or herdsmen or whatever take root from people's houses and mountain to mountains in the forest? When you talk about tents, we are not talking about the ground tents. We have helicopters, we have planes, we have drones. As you say, they cannot fly across such places and see where those people are. And talking about the attempts of government, the APC government, they tell us that, oh, from day to day, time to time, they say, oh, they, they, they attacked a settlement of bandits and injured four. How? Do they use catapult? <laughs> I hear of injuring some and not killing. <laughs> Okay, and when they but injure four, saying, excuse me, sir, when they yes. injure four and injure ten and arrest five, what happens to those that are arrested? Okay. So they release them and reintegrate them into the society. I'll come back to you, Barrister. I, I will come back to you, Barrister. I'll come back. Calm down, Barrister. Please, let's watch our emotions. Don't let our emotions get the best of us, okay? Uh, Even because, in this situation? Uh, yes. Ju 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 just calm down, Barrister. <laughs> well, um, All right. Ahmed, you, you, you heard him. He said he's going to hit the bloom of the party. He's giving strong points. Why he's saying the party, the party uh, is a party responsible for what we are going through right now. After all, during some of the PDP, that was when it started. So to speak, we've not seen it as it is right now in this level. Yes, President Tinubu is doing his best. You know, from what uh, we've been to, from what you've heard, security votes have been given to governors. After all, no governors have come out to complain that he hasn't been given the security vote per month, and that is to take care of their state security wise. This is the fault of our president. Now, that is on one hand. On the other hand, some are saying the mistake that the former president made 
was to absorb, so to speak, repentant Boko Haram terrorists, in quote right now, into our armed forces. Is that the reason why, one of the reasons why we are going through what we are going through right now? Hmm. Oh, yeah. Let me start with uh, the first one you have uh, raised. Yes, uh, security votes money have been given to state governors for them to protect their, their states. Then why should the blame not go to the president? Yes, uh, security needed to start from the local government level, then up to the state level, then to the federal level. And uh, you will agree that the federal will call the federal today is an embodiment of all the states. And the state will call today is the embodiment of all the local mm -hmm. governments. So if the security at the local government level is well tackled, then at the state level is well tackled. I think the federal government will just have less job to do, to do a supervisory role. So mm -hmm. why the blame to some extent to go to the president right now? You have given somebody money to go and purchase some bags of grains for you. You need to have monitored how that bag of grain was bought and how it was being what distributed. Why those who you give money to buy two bags of grain, they later bought one bag. I think it's also your or your your power too to say, oh, I gave you money to buy two bags of grain and you bought one bag of grains and you bought one. So please return the other money or you should be sanctioned for not doing the other stuff. Yes, there is no way the president will be free from all these accusations because as it stands right now, is the number one citizen of this country, meaning the father. Meaning in your house right now, you are in charge. You are you've left home since morning now. And you must have done one or two things to your wife to take care of the kids. Mm -hmm. When you come back, your kid now start reporting to you. Ah, Daddy, mommy did not even give us what we were supposed to be doing. I think it's only for you to now ask your wife why. And if necessarily for you to take action, you take action in order for things to be going nowhere. I believe your house is okay. That is why you could, you are fresh. But if your wife had given you a problem last night, I don't think you have been fresh like this. And you have not been smiling in this manner. So yes, the president will surely have the blue because yeah. of uh, the attack, because of the way the insecurity is in the country. Mm -hmm. It's not really a funny thing. Yeah. You see, in the developed clan, you have many security forces. In some, we will hear, you know, one police officer to 10 citizens. But in the case of Nigeria now, <laughs> I believe it's going to be one police officer to like 100,000 uh, 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 <laughs> Citizens, uh, or, or, you, you, you're right now. It's too far. Yes, too far. Let's yeah. say to 10, to, or let's say to 1,000 mm. uh, citizens. Mm. You, you not imagine how can that one single police officer be able to secure the properties and lives of 1,000 citizens? It's not going to be meaning that we have shortfall of these security forces. I still believe that if the police is recruiting even 10,000 10, on six small bases, it's still not enough. You understand what I'm saying now? Meaning that and Nigeria is so populated to the extent that if we decide to be recruiting people into the armed forces, will we have enough manpower to man this armed forces, to, 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 to man the security of this country? In fact, this is not a rocket science. It's not a rocket science. Is that the reason why they are uh, uh, conscripted right now, repentant, Boko Haram, I mean, members of the armed forces? To, don't don't think that is a huge mistake. To, to, and that's what we are where we are for today. You to go and bring in a repentant Boko Haram into is a security architecture. When you have people who are already, uh, you know, who don't have these disabused minds already, who are innocent of this kind of situation, mm -hmm. that are willing to serve in the forces, well, why will you not go and bring those ones in when we have so many? people who are willing to join the security agencies. Mm -hmm. If the police should open their portal today for recruitment, in less than two hours, you see the number of persons that have applied. If the Nigerian army should open their portal now for recruitment, in less than one hour, you see the number of persons that, that will apply for this job. So we have persons who are there to manage. The only area you use reserve forces, like in all these cases, bringing all these persons, is when you see that you don't have enough forces on ground again. They don't have to go back to veterans, reserve forces. Okay, you guys will come oh, with the ones who have on ground. They are already, you know, going. So just come and join the force. Not when we have able-bodied people who are willing to join the force. And you are bringing somebody, a repentant somebody, so, so something called, to come and join the force. Let me tell you, information is power. When you lay out all your plans and somebody is able to diverge experiments to bring out your information, in fact, you have defeated your opponent just, just because of that information you have gotten. So meaning that in the force, that is why most of them use codes. If some security men are communicating here now, even you as a layman, you won't understand what they are saying. They have to use some codes. You will not get the information that they are passing. But that information is key. 
Once that information leaks, that's all. You have def you have be you have been defeated. That is why you see some persons are arresting some you know, international and say, okay, they are arresting him for espionage because he came to my country to spy. Because when you come in to spy, you are releasing some, you know, see, you know, some delicate information out. And that one may lead to the downfall of your country. So bringing all those persons into the military, and when you know they are part and parcel of a group before, they claim they are repaired, do you have a microscope to check their heart, that their heart mm -hmm. is 100% clean? When we are living in a deceitful world, as I'm smiling with you now, do you know if I'm angry with you at the same time? Mm. <laughs> you won't know. And yet, you are bringing in somebody who says a repentant. Repentant word. Somebody that made up his or meant to join a particular group. Because of the serious warfare now, it's okay. I've answered. Do you know if he's 100% answered? It can be there selling some, selling some telegram information out to, you know, their colleagues. It's okay, well, we are laying an attack in social area today. Okay, you poor are coming. Okay, no problem. To be candid with you. This so-called uh, Boko Haram or this so-called Esme, this so-called Yoruba, or these different, different names as the case may be, they are not as powerful as our Nigerian forces. I still say it any day, any time. They are not as powerful as the security forces we have in this country. Nigerian security architecture is one of the most banal security architecture in the whole world. I say it any day, any time. All we need is encouragement and for them to... That's why I'm saying that if there's no collaboration between the security forces and these people, then they should tell us what the problem is. If it is funding, let them say so that we raise alarm for them. If it is map power, the people are, are there right. to join the forces so that they will right. do this thing. Right. So the president on as this whole case is that we surely collect the blame because he's the head of the country. Okay. Over now to you, Joshua. He said the president was collective because he's the head of the country, but I'm not seeing any governor complaining that has not gotten security for someone much said the money is even increasing. They have not gotten security for that. That should be what people should be focusing on. Like what he rightly said, if security is taken care of in the local government, definitely the state will have lesser work to do. If take care of also in the state, the federal government will have lesser work to do. It's like, you know, a chain reaction, so to speak, from top to bottom. So what's your take on this? All right. Blaming, heaping the blame. <laughs> or one particular arm of government. What about the others? Okay, all right. Uh, first and foremost, again, you, mm. you see, uh, we have a welcome misplaced priority. Misplaced priority? Yes, we have welcome misplaced priorities in this, in this country. That's the reason why you see that, uh, you know, all of these things come and they are not being, uh, you know, tackled properly. Now, they, you cannot tell me that there's no panacea. There's no, there's no panacea to, uh, to insecurity. Like I said earlier, it, at the particular time that the government has decided to say, let us squarely deal with this thing, mm -hmm. their level of readiness, like my brother said here, yeah, if they let them tell us what the problem is, you know, let them tell us. every time at the, at the National Assembly, when they are, when they are uh, bringing budget, you will see the amount that is allocated to security, inclusive of the security vote or the security that is channeled to all different uh, uh, states. Now, like you rightly said, my brother, uh, no governor has come out to say that he has not got, gotten his, his own part. You understand? So, now what the, they should do coming down to the local government you know, level. Because now, I'm seeing, uh, we are seeing vigilantes. You can see these local vigilantes. Yeah, vigilantes. Okay. I'm not checking okay. on the rest yeah. of them. I, I can even tell you that those guys are not even well trained and empowered. They are even constituting nuisance. Constituting nuisance. They harass people, harass people at night. When you are driving, to stop and harass you. Give me something, give me something. So I'm telling you the truth. Because they are not well <laughs> Some are volunteer basis. Yes. Yeah, so it is it is our level of readiness. It's the level mm -hmm. of readiness of this of this lead of our of our of our leader. Of course, you you, you are saying that the president is, is, is the head do he has to take that punch as here. But coming down to uh, all other the other levels, the, the, the governors, if they're actually intentional about all of these things, then they say, okay, let us put a check to this. But now I want to give an example. You see this in your road. That was a den of kidnappers. Are you aware that when the military entered that place, you saw you can say you can you can see the calmness on that road. But before, in in a week, mm. they will kidnap, you know, some set of persons, take them. But you, you, you see that when the government came in, the thing actually reduced. reduced. That is to say, that is to say that if these people would actually want to do this thing and say, okay, no, let us actually tackle this issue of insecurity, they can actually do it. I also said earlier that it is because they are actually profiting and actually benefiting from it. Because if you don't stand, uh, if you don't stand to gain anything uh, from any from uh, anything that any venture you are into, you, you won't you put in into, energy. You, yeah, exactly. You won't put in energy because everything will still turn back and come back to me to, to, to you. So it is it is still, it is still rather you know it is still very very unfortunate.
All right. Before I call it to wrap on this segment for Davin 2 Edo 2024, someone said that all these kidnappers, all these terrorism, or terrorists rather, all these headers, farmers fighting, all those kind of things we're experiencing right now in Nigeria, these persons perpetrating all these uh, terrorist acts. Of course, I'm coming to you, Barrister. These are card carrying members of various political parties in Nigeria. They do come out to vote. I mean, no, taking it from one particular angle, that is this party or that party that, look, it, it, it's high time everyone started looking into even their own political party, looking at the hegemon, looking at the head. Look, what do you do for a living? Uh, and all that. <laughs> <laughs> but we start taking it from there. Oh, is it well, we, that is cuts across all political parties. Let me, let me quickly say that to believe that... Um, the federal government has sent in security votes to the governors, and the governors are not complaining. And so that ought to check in security. Is at the state level. At the state level is, in the words of APC, the height of cluelessness. Barista. APC, APC. Barista, this is a low, this is another low blow. APC, this is another low blow. APC taught us certain vocabularies. Cluelessness was one. They popular, popularized cluelessness in Nigeria. And if you now say, Wilson, that because federal government sent money to, to states, insecurity ought to maybe be brought down. Yes. I'm surprised that even you believe that. Because the state governors, by what means would they bring down insecurity? The local government chairman. It is the MAPC that killed the move for state police in the country, if you remember. And now you are sending money. That's part of the, the, the kind of government that they, they run, lutocracy, if you like. They just send the money to placate the various governors and perhaps Leo Demito, the To APC. placate or to do their job. Don't forget to do security what, vote. What job are they going to security do? Security vote. Because some states right now have security excuse vote excuse that begin to establish job security me, architecture. Excuse me, sir. Are the state governments in charge of the military? No. Are they in charge of the police? No. Do even the police commissioner take instructions from the state governors? No. Do we have state policing that the police the, that the, the governors ought to take charge of? The APC said no. You talked about uh, the security architecture put in place by a uh, state government. What do they call them? Vigilante yeah, group. Vigilante. Mm. What do they have? You also mentioned that they have no training. And if it is because they ask anything for the boys at night, you say they are not disciplined. Do the regular police not do the same? <laughs> do they not do the same? The ones so if you send them. money to a governor mm. to take charge of his state, and you are saying you are not going to allow state police to be established around the country, how many, apart from Ondo and a few western states in the west and Edo state, how many others have their local vigilantes? And the local vigilantes, are they recognized? So why do we send money to governors who cannot give directives to the military, the soldiers, or the police? By what means are they going to ensure security of the country? We, maybe we don't know that the police, Nigerian police force, ought to take charge of internal security network in the country. And the military uh, territorial integrity, and in fact, where there is serious problem, they come in. Is any of this arm, including the Navy, including the Air Force, mm -hmm. is any of those uh, uh, SEC responsible to the governors? We are seeing a clueless administration, and we are trying to, to, to pamper them here. Sending money just to say, oh, you take this and keep quiet. That's what it means. All right. Okay. If you now talk about, sorry, if you talk about, okay, do I go to what, what you say? <laughs> barrister, barrister, well... You, you, you made what are they expected to do with the money? Okay. You send one billion naira to a governor, he gives 100,000 uh, 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 to the police commissioner, and he receives it almost on his knees because it's not supposed to come from him. Directives right. come from the center. Okay. So even the police, the Air Force, the Navy, Navy, the military, and you're asking the local government chairman that has to beg for a police orderly to take our security in the local government, we must change our system our way of governance before such things can happen. Thank you, Barrister. It is impossible. Thank you. Thank you so much, Barrister. That is your last line you spoke on at length. But from what I could gather, it is like he's saying that security voters like, you know, wasted venture. Now, Dash. 
dash. <laughs> so react to that, if I can, quickly before we go to the next discussion. Uh, I will not hundred percent agree with him that is a dash because some <laughs> governors are actually utilizing the as well. Some may not be utilizing the as well. You can agree with me that uh, in Borono State today, everybody, everybody is celebrating Governor Zulu. Mm. Uh -huh. So Governor Zulum now is actually now setting a new pace that people will do use as a case study for good governance in the future. So some are actually utilizing the elsewhere, well. some may have not been utilizing the elsewhere. Well. And uh, to quickly come to what my brother said, those uh, uh, those security network, Obaseki is actually training them. He has trained about two batches. If I uh, if it's no more than that, because I'm aware of two batches in a police uh, training college in Ogida. Mm -hmm. So maybe probably that is where some of the security vote money is actually also going on to. So in some states, it's not actually waste, but some states may just be using it to be taking care of themselves, flying to Dubai for vacation, as the case may be. be. All right, what about the your last yeah, line? Yeah, yeah, sorry, well, I want to just uh, a bit to a bit, you know, uh, uh, differ. From what uh, my learned uh, senior said about the state uh, policing. Mm -hmm. Now, you know what I think is that um, what, what we have now is it's not it's not bad. We just it just they just need revamping. They just need to rebrand. Now, look at it from another angle. If uh, governors are allowed or states are allowed to fund their own state police, they will take advantage of it. Mm -hmm. Yes, they will eventually take advantage of it. Imagine for, for bullying. In, in the, imagine the the head of let's say the commission. Let's say there's a in quote now. Mm -hmm. Let's say the, the the head of uh, police, the commissioner, is on under the state. It will be directly answerable to the go, to the governor, and the governor will want to use it to do whatever he wants. You should be taking directly. So I think what we need to do eh, in my own is to actually what we have on ground is to actually sanitize the system. You mm -hmm. understand? Look at you know panaceas and think of possible uh, solutions. You understand? So that is that is it basically. Wow. Yeah. Interesting. It's like for by Starbucks and Imade no holds bar for the AP. It's like you know APC, this APC that he, he gave very strong he reasons. Came. Why why he's saying it? Why he said it came with very strong reasons uh, for the past nine years. This is what we've been experiencing and all that. Set up from uh, uh, good luck, ability to the administration. We're thinking that when this administration comes into being, uh, definitely there will be less issues when you talk about security, but it's like he said, Kalitin. So nobody will blame us such. But his emotional outburst at times, Doris, please watch your emotions. <laughs> watch your emotions. Well, YK is a card carrying member. He said, well, you made a point. It's true. But. Security vote has been given. Some governors are using theirs properly, judiciously, but others are not doing it. And Joshua said we have to sanitize the system. Ten years after, Chibok girls, now Chibok women, 87 of them unaccounted for, which were in Nigeria. Go through the roads. People are scared of going through some part of the country because of kidnapping. You get about banditry, terrorism. Even some persons from that particular tribe are not getting involved in so-called right now in quote kidnapping business because according to them in quote is a lucrative venture how are we going to survive this how are we going to come out of this it cuts across political parties that the apc pdp ypp you just name it because some of these kidnappers bandits they are card carrying members of these political parties APC, PDP, YPP, ZDP, PRP, you just know it. They are all Nigerians. Some are saying some are not Nigerians. But mind you, if a country is not settled, nobody will be at peace. The economy will be down. Everything will be down. The government of the day should do everything they can. Yes, they are trying. They should do more. They should do more. They should do more. I want to leave it at this particular level. Gentlemen, thank you so, so much for your wonderful opinion.